ladies and gentlemen, get ready for combo. Let's see how long the opponent lets us do cool things. Triggers. What is happening? Commanders. <laughs> In my opinion, the most broken deck you're going to see. Monkey. This is Historic Brawl. Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me at CGB. Today we're playing Rowan, Scion of War in Historic Brawl. She has a sick ability where you tap it and spells you cast this turn that are black or red cost X less to cast or X is the amount of life you lost this turn. So while life is a resource for many, life is the ultimate resource for us as we're going to turn our life total into mana to do insane busted things. Things. Yeah, the idea is that once we have that cost reduction, we're going to cast giant spells like Crackle with Power and Torment of Hailfire. But to actually find those cards, we get to do some crazy storm off things with Seize the Spoils, Unexpected Windfall, Pirate's Pillage, effects that copy these, etc. And it's actually a really exciting deck. I mean, when you're playing Rakdos and you have Arcane Bombardment as a very good include, and then spells like Breach the Multiverse that you could exile with it everything gets very entertaining very quickly so i'm really excited to show this one to you because it has some serious combo pop-off potential as well as that rakdos early game control with some hand disruption and ways to kill cheap creatures we also have a few nasty cards like blood moon and necropotence that can really kick the deck to another gear so if you enjoy a different style of combo-y over the top rakdos this could definitely be a deck list for you and if you're not sure if you enjoy that watch the video that's what the games are for let's dive in let the nonsense begin on the excuse me on the play the first sliver well that's delightful cascade is a heck of a drug this hand i guess we'll keep a black market connection on the play painful bond is there too we're going to try to draw all kinds of cards and do all kinds of things it's going to be great first sliver is by the way an odd and so is rowan so those two aren't going to mesh well with extinction event when we're coming out with tap lands on tap lands boom connect shieldred's an even that could be nice. And Valky is an expensive card. Opponent passes turn. Let's get them to counter our commander, because that's what people do. Or not. I'm sure they'll kill it somehow. They wouldn't just let me have my commander in a black market connection, would they? That would be insane. Opponent, you've done nothing. Do something. I'm worried about you. Okay. We got two basics we do smoldering marsh come and get it seize the spoils is here now i think we have a ton of cards and i don't know that a three two really helps me too much so let's start just shifting into treasure territory we have to save some of this life for later also i think the opponent wants to cast their first sliver in cascade Let's put Rowan on the field just in case they don't hit a removal spell. Because if we get that cost reduction of six next turn, it's going to be really good. Can they do it? I don't know if they can do it. They're missing two colors here. Yeah, no green. Also no red. Too much Esper going on. Our opponent's giving us the look of a first sliver deck that's actually an Esper control deck, which is a way you can build it. You can do anything you want with the first sliver. Cascade is good all the time. The only thing that's kind of bad with it are counter spells. But are you ready for a war? Let's do some stupid. Your children. Here, seize the spoils. Ashiok. All right. Ashiok's an interesting one because Ashiok kind of messes everything up, too. March of Reckless Joy until the end of your next turn. So this is just six, is just straight, straight up free here. Woo well, that's a lot of land. Uh, the card will be Mind Spike, but we'll get there in a minute. Here's Tibble. 
Give me that key. What else? The kindling is just fine to get down, but not great. Ashiok's interesting, because then we can't pay life in the future. But, I mean, we can still lose life. This does make you pay. I know there's a difference now. No, it's lose. What's down here? There is still Seize the Spoils and Painful Bond. Well, that's really something. All right, that's fun. The six is free. We could go 10 and triple, right? No, X has to equal 10. Right now, X equals six, but you have to pay the two red. I'm too short of that. All right. Hey. Go, baby, go to the moon. Uh, discard this mountain. Like a coin is free. We like free. Keep the free coming, Blood Moon. That'll probably get him to scoop. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to drag it out a little more than that. Bergy, Bergy Berg. Or do we play the horn? This keeps the mana coming. Yeah, we play Bergs. Let's go, Bergs. All right, so this. Like this becomes a red. Full storm unlocking here. Demonic tutor in hand. Kami war in hand. Yeah, the blood moon probably going to destroy them. <laughs> Should we show them how it ends? Not yet. No, let's do it. Why not? Now you can't cast your spells. I'd say sorry, but I'm not. Good turn, good turn, good turn happened. That's how we do it. That's how we war. <laughs> it's not fair. It's not okay. Grand Warlord Rada. Well, I'm the scion of war. You're a warlord. We should be getting along. Tand has removal. It also has windfall mastery. If we don't draw land, it's terrible. I'll give it a try. Coligan's command will probably pick off some mana dork. Like usually these are a lot of elves. Might kill a shadow spear. Dark ritual is a good magic card. <laughs> what a top deck. But what are we going to use it for in this hand? We might have to set up a double spell. Our opponent does not have a fast start, which is good. Yeah, I don't. Dark Ritualing out Fable seems good, but I just think what we want to do is grasp, untap, Dark Ritual, and then Fable something else? Ah, patience, patience, patience. Falling Serper Pard. Da da die. What I probably want to do is get out Rowan. I mean, Rowan makes everything really exciting. What do I have to actually lose life, though? Not much. Nothing. All right, Fable it is. We'll be the scourge of standard we hope to repeat in the world. Yeah, I think that what Dark Ritual is for, flashback music's mastery. We want to cast the Windfall, and we want to recast the Mastery. Seize the Spoils is good, too. I think we don't... I mean, actually, discarding the Command, this all makes Mastery even better. Next turn, even. Wow. Just fuel up that Graveyard. We draw Pirate's Pillage. Which I guess I want to cast anyway? Discarding Windfall? No, well, Windfall, discarding Pillage. We'll hold up Mana to make them think that we're going to interact with them, and that might change their play. Mm. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Let's windfall and see if we just hit, I don't know, a lightning bolt. <laughs> Definitely not a lightning bolt.
Anything else, opponent? It passed the turn. Okay. Okay. It's time to get real. It's time to get crazy. I will dark ritual. Opponent, that nothing good ever came from a dark ritual if you're the opponent. Overload Mizzix Mastery. <laughs> you. We have to discard all three of our cards, which I accept. We're going to get a brand new hand. It's going to be amazing. Why not? Let's Dark Ritual again. We might have cool things to do with it. Uh, destroy an artifact. Two damage to any target. Artifact, target. Grass, token. It all dies. Everything dies. Bring it on home to me. That's a lot of land. Oh my god, that's a lot of land, actually. Uh, Alright, well, it's gonna have to be Rowan. Rowan into Torment next turn. So many lands. An Archimancer. Yep, I'm gonna kill her. Not surprised, but I have a response. Malika Rebirth, do not send her to the command zone. And back she comes. <laughs> Another one. I see how it is. I see how it is. Torment right now is for eight. I mean... We'll do it that way then. What you got? Eight times you either have to sacrifice a non-land, discard a card, or lose three life. Terror of the Peaks, gone. Goblin and Archimancer, probably gone. Ah, there goes the level life total. Life total go burr. Yeah, I'll attack. I'll trade with your Anarchomancer. You tried so hard to keep it. All right, Let's see if they can come back on four life here. I mean, really, we have a ton of land in hand, but we do have Valky. Grand Lord, w w Grand War Ward Wada, on the move. Three, four haste makes some mana. Oh my lord. Cosmic Imposter coming through. They will probably put this back in the command zone before I attack them with it. They don't have the mana to recast and go kill Tybalt, so they have to top deck. If they have a lightning bolt here, my heart is going to break. Hell is going on. Four two menace. They need two blockers, and I'm going to cast it every turn for the rest of the game until they die. Just die. What the hell? That's not a land. It's over. Stop talking. Let's do this. <laughs> I thought for a second that one was going to get away from me. I really was starting to get scared. Holy crap. Covert Go Blue movie review. This weekend I saw A Haunting in Venice. It's the latest Agatha Christie movie turned into a Kenneth Branagh vehicle as he's both the star and director. And it's a detective slash horror movie that you might be surprised to find out 
happens in Venice. Now, I enjoyed Murder on the Orient Express when that came back. Did not enjoy Death on the Nile. I think that movie was pretty clunky. So going into their third kind of Agatha Christie mystery novel thing, of which I have never read before, there are two things that I find super important with this movie. Number one, that it is a complicated mystery, that it is not too easy to solve, that you can't see it coming from a mile away. And again, I'm asking that you don't spoil it for yourself because it is an old book at this point. And number two, that in the end, you feel either shocked or clever. You have to feel one of those things. And I didn't feel shocked or clever in Death on the Nile. So for A Haunting in Venice, uh, I will say I actually, I, you know, I did the thing. I turned to wife. I, I called who I thought did it going towards the final scene, you know, entering the third act. And I was right. And I felt clever. And it's the first time I've gotten it that right. You know, I actually had most of it figured out and I felt really, really smart. So if you want to play a game, go to the movie and you can try to figure it out and see if you are correct before the final unveiling like CGB was. Uh, I will say I got up and I left for a bathroom break and a refill of the beverage. And my wife told me about a scene that I missed that she thought made it pretty obvious. So she wasn't quite as impressed. <laughs> well, I mean, she was impressed with me because I didn't see that scene, but she wasn't. She she also uh, be believed she had it figured out and did. Uh, so uh, it is good though. Uh, I do want to stress, I thought that this was the best of the three that they've made. I had a really good time. It's a really good date movie. So if you're looking for something to take your partner to, uh, both my wife and I enjoyed it quite a bit. And it's got the spoopy vibes for October. So I think that A Haunting in Venice, it's worth going to the theater if you've got the weekend and you're willing to travel outside of your home. You could wait for it to come to home video. It's not like a must-see event. It doesn't hit like the tippity top of the scale, but it's a good time if you need something to do on a weekend. So A Haunting in Venice, check it out. Hashtag not sponsored. Back to the video. On the draw, we have the One Ring and Thoughtseize in hand. We're against Chromium the Mutable. Card I have some experience with in paper. Let's see what happens. We do have to draw land. If we don't draw land, this will be a disaster. Our hand is just busted cards. All right. Teferi. Opt. March. Purge. We're going to have to get that march out of them. Well, I guess using it on the one ring isn't like great. It's kind of a time walk and a card draw. And then Bolus' Citadel. If that lives, we're good. Purge is a dead card. Let's take Teferi. It's just the best card by a mile, right? Even a gold span dragon can't just fly over and kill it. Hold on to your butts. We're going to have a draw step where I will decide whether or not to concede. Ah, not lethal. Don't see a counter spell yet. We're gonna find out if they drew one. I'm going to discard the dragon because I can get it back with a Coligan's command. That is very rude. <laughs> that is incredibly rude to top deck that absorb and then counter the thing that was going to get me more land. Wow, they are so lucky. Their top decks are perfect so far. Absolutely perfect. If they stack their deck, that's what they'd choose. A counter spell into a draw spell. Into a discard effect. Yeah, okay. I see you. You're cheating. All right, uh, return and discard. Return and discard. They'll probably just discard purge, no big deal, but a card's a card, especially when they're doing as well as they are. If we top deck here and get to play one ring, that's pretty good. All right. Go for it.
They'll probably spend their turn marching it, which hopefully we draw the land and play the Goldspan Dragon. We really need the dragon to do something before Chromium shuts it down. Then if they spend their turn on Chromium, we can play Citadel. So come on, land. <sighs> frustrating. Very, very frustrating game. They might miss a land drop. They're not holding up Chromium anyway. Okay. At least we'll know what it is. I have to reveal it. If it's a counter spell. Uh, okay. I'm surprised they took the gold span. I thought they'd take the citadel. They kept on top and we draw an uncastable card. That's that's nice. This was overwhelming. Might be a land though. Just get their dragon going. Okay. Well, oh, play into the dragon, I suppose. What else can you do? Is an empty canvas for my heart. Open your mind to me. Gonna need cards. Gonna need cost reduction from Rowan. Menace. Your bravery will not last. Bond. Really? Oh, okay. I'm like, God, you counter this too? Like, how, how good can you rip? They gotta slow down at some point, right? All right, so now we get the pay one life thing. So, strike it rich. First life paid. And reduce everything by one. I think if I target with Feed the Swarm, I don't think they're going to, don't think it's going to work out. All right, we haven't land dropped. Let's Mountain Cycle. Blood Crypt. Pay two. Tap. Go for Citadel. I hate having to do the land drop first. Pray. Pray that we get an instant or sorcery we get to cast. <gasps> we got Shilly on top. Come on, come on, come on. Please, an instant or sorcery. Please, an instant or sorcery. No, a land. No, 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 no. <sighs> ah, Jack, why? Oh well. It was gonna be so sweet if we hit like an unexpected windfall there. It was gonna be so sweet. All right, they're trying to kill me. We go to five. Then they wrath probably. Worse. My God, they stack their deck. They're so good. All right, they're at 22. We have torment. We've got to get a bit more damage dealt. Feed the Swarm can't even hit Chromium. Fortunately, we've got a few turns till Chromium comes back. They draw a card draw. How much damage is this? Six. Six times three, 18. We need to get a punch in. Okay. 
gotta get a punch in. They do have cards in hand. They can play Chromium, discard two cards. Do they win? I mean, it's my only play, right? So we have to hope this that they mess up. Alright, sacri sacrifice chromium. Maybe? Maybe. Discard. Discard. Go to three. Too bad. Almost beat their perfect nut draws, too. Would have been would have brought me great satisfaction. It really would have. Oh well. It was a close one. And we are back for a post-game wrap up. A post-game wrap you may hear a few times if you are a regular viewer of the show. And I, you know, hope that you are. And, you know, if this is your first time hearing it, here's information about me, about CGB. I am traveling to MagicCon Las Vegas. But unlike other MagicCons that I've traveled to this year, all of the ones I've traveled to this year, I'm actually working at this show. I have a job. I am hosting Game Nights Live, which honestly is like one of the coolest roles I've ever been offered. And uh, if you're new to Magic or you only focus on Arena, you may not have heard of the Command Zone and Game Nights and Game Nights Live, but you should check it out. They have a YouTube channel. So this, what does this mean? It means I have to be in Vegas for a long time this week for rehearsals because they are pros. This is a serious production. This is a big deal. So with that in mind, I have to record a whole bunch of videos in a very small window. So if the videos are shorter than you remember, this is the reason why. If the videos don't have a specify a special outro where I talk about the stats, this is the reason why. It's a real challenge that I don't think most people ever have to understand to both uh, find decks and then play decks and then make footage with decks for like 10 consecutive days upcoming within the span of a couple of days, which is the situation I'm in. In. So if the decks are net decked in some situations or in more than normal, or they don't seem like the typical CGB deck, that is also because of the schedule I'm trying to keep. And I do appreciate your patience. I take having an audience very seriously. I appreciate you a great deal. I love that you tune in all the time. I love that you have an expectation of me, you know, that that becomes heavy. And I feel it in the comments when people are like, this is not the usual CGB deck or he looks tired today or things like that. Yeah. Yeah, I know, because sometimes if I'm traveling, I have to record up to 10 hours of video in a single day to try to cover some of that space. So thank you to those who are patient. I don't, the comments get in my head. I know it comes from a place of love. It's really not helpful to leave such comments, but at least for those of you who watch till the end, you have an answer, which maybe you can uh, go back and let people know who do leave those comments and then just leave that this isn't my usual thing. I try to give you about a lunch break's worth of content every single day if I can, and that is what I plan to do when I get back from Vegas. For those of you attending MagicCon Las Vegas, I will be doing Game Nights Live on Friday. Please come out to the show. I will put on the very best show that I can as a commentator for the Game Nights Live Championship. And if you're there on Saturday, I plan to do meet and beats at 2 p.m. local time at the Ultimate Guard booth. And what that is, you don't need to have a deck or anything. If you ever wanted to play against me, they have decks on hand. They're like all-star decks from standard past. You can sit down and play a little best of one against the one in best of one at 2 p.m. at the Ultimate Guard booth on Saturday. At least that's the plan right now as I know it. And then the last thing is on Sunday, you can find me at the Game Nights booth at 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., shutting the place down the last signing of the weekend. So I would really appreciate it if you'd come by and get your shark token signed. I even signed Jenga Taxes. I even signed Mountains. I signed Fervent Champions. Honestly, I get asked all the time, would you sign a Cranko? Guys, it's your cards. And I know I wouldn't be here without you. 
And that is why when I'm at these events, it really is like, I'll do my best to meet you. Now, the other thing I get asked all the time is, can we play a game of Commander? I don't know. It's really hard for me to get time to play Commander. And often I get asked, hey, CGB, CGB, please come play with us. And I'm like, I can't, I'm going to thing. It's my only chance of the whole weekend to get in the merch line. You know, stuff like that comes up. So I can't promise you a game of Commander, but uh, I'll do my best. And if you see me, say hi. Uh, let me know you watch the show. It means a lot to me, of course. It's the, the best part of what I do, honestly, is meeting so many people at these things this year. I've only got two more appearances this year. One, Magic on Vegas. Two, oh, almost used the wrong finger. Cool Stuff Inc. in Command Fest Orlando. And that is the in coming up in October. You've seen some ads for it here on the channel. So hopefully I'll get to see you guys there. And if I am not come, haven't come to your country yet, as always next year. Anyway, this intro, outro, this outro thing is gonna be used a number of times to help explain to people what's up with the videos because people always leave me a bunch of comments while I'm gone with things like this didn't feel like a usual CGB video or why isn't it long enough or why is it a net deck or why does he look tired? That's why, because I'm putting in the work to make sure that every day you guys get a little something to get you through your day until I'm back in the office. And in the meantime, off to do some exciting things. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I'll see you in the next video. And don't accuse me of not remembering to say it. I am putting this in every video for a reason, so that you hear your daily dose of, you're cool.